Can I do it now? Can I do it now? Yeah, why do <clears throat> Got carried away. Sorry about that. It's your board. Hey, that was a clip from the movie, Surf's Up. What do you think? Did you understand it? There was an idiom in it. Did you hear it? Hello, my name is Dakota, and if you've ever walked out of an English class thinking, hey, I'm beginning to really understand English only to be totally frustrated when you sat down and watched an American movie. You may have understood most of the words being spoken, but you couldn't understand the meaning. Having a clear understanding of English is so important, whether it's being used in school, social situations, or in your professional life. English has become the common world language and regardless of why you're trying to learn it, it is essential that you understand the true meaning of what is being said. To do so, you must understand idioms and phrasal verbs. This is why I'm making these videos. I want to help you learn about idioms and phrasal verbs, but more importantly, I want to do it in a fun and enjoyable way. Learning a new language can be so boring. I'm hoping that, by using movies and TV shows, you'll be able to enjoy the learning process more. There will be seven idioms or phrasal verbs examined in each of these videos and there will be an initial series of videos analyzing about 100 idioms and phrasal verbs. The number of these phrases will quickly ramp up to more than 1,000 idioms and phrasal verbs as more videos are uploaded. These videos would be great for teachers as well. So sit back and relax and let's learn about idioms and phrasal verbs. Okay, let's take a look at our first phrase. The name of this phrase is, eat my dust. The meaning of this phrase is, people say this when they are confident that they will defeat another person in a competitive event. The person is usually bragging and mocking another person. They might be saying, ha, huh, I know that I am faster than you. You're going to eat my dust. They may just be trying to have some fun, or they might be seriously taunting another person. An example of this phrase is, all right, I'm going to take the lead on the very first turn and I'm not going to give it up. All of the other racers can eat my dust. I came here to win. The man is saying that he is confident the racers behind him will continue to stay behind him. He thinks he will win. Another example of this phrase is, I've got a brother and a sister, but neither of them can outrun me. They can eat my dust. The fast dog is saying that he is the fastest dog. His brother and sister will run slower than him every time. And just to summarize, eat my dust is said when a person thinks they will dominate another person in some kind of competition. Now let's look at some video clips that provide examples of this phrase. Ha! 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 Woo! My hooves are burning, baby! They are burning! <laughs> oh, look at this! I got a tiptoe! I got a tiptoe! Eat my dust, dingo! <laughs> In this clip, a saber-toothed tiger is trying to catch an antelope. The tiger, Diego, is running well, but after a while, becomes exhausted. The antelope thinks that this is funny and taunts Diego. After this, the antelope says, eat my dust. The antelope is saying that he'll be moving away from Diego so fast, the only thing he will see is dust in the air. Take your place at the starting line. This is all about teamwork. Everybody stick together. I'm gonna beat you over that finish line. Get ready to eat my dust. Hey guys, should we huddle up? In this clip, Mike is in a competition. He's supposed to be a teammate with Sully, but, at the moment, they are angry with each other. Mike tells Sully that he's going to beat him over the finish line. Sully responds by saying that Mike should be ready to eat my dust. Sully is saying that Mike will be eating the dust he kicks up as he runs in front of him. Ah, eat my dust, racially stereotypical plumber. <laughs> That's not fair.
fair, I got stuck behind a tree. <laughs> and a cow and a penguin. In this clip, Sheldon is playing a car racing video game against Raj. Raj plays the game better than Sheldon, and as he is about to win, he says, eat my dust. Raj is saying that since Sheldon's car is behind his, he can eat the dust that his car is creating in front of him. People usually say this when they are happy to be finishing in front of someone when racing. Great. Now let's look at our second phrase. The name of this phrase is, show him the ropes. The meaning of this phrase is, to show someone how to do a particular job or task. If you were hired by a large company, you would definitely want to have someone show you the ropes as to how the company operates and what expectations they might have for you. In other words, you would want someone to explain to you the procedures used by the company and what the company expected you to do. An example of this phrase is, Hey Marge, don't even try teaching him. I tried to show him the ropes earlier. He didn't learn a thing. I think that dog is broken. The orange golden retriever is saying that he tried to teach the puppy some tricks earlier, but was unsuccessful. Another example of this phrase is, Hey Bobby. You see that new kid in the red shoes. He doesn't understand how to play on a team. Can you show him the ropes? The coach is asking Bobby to teach the new player about the fundamentals of how to play on a team. And to summarize, show him the ropes means to explain or demonstrate to another person how to do a job or activity. Now let's look at some video clips that provide examples of this phrase. Pop, pop, I can handle the reef. It's not a no, problem. No, no. We're going to do this as a family. Frankie, I want you to take Lenny out, show him the ropes. Oh, come on, Pop. Son, you're going to learn how to be a shark. In this clip, the Don wants his son, Lenny, to learn more about being a real shark. Since Lenny doesn't like violence and doesn't want to kill other creatures, the Don tells his other son, Frankie, to show him the ropes. The Don is telling Frankie that he should teach Lenny how to act like a real shark. Show him the ropes means to teach someone the proper way to do things. Don't blame me. Blame the high fuel costs, blame insurance premiums, blame technology. You, know, you better watch yourself. You're a little too young to become a dinosaur. I'm not a dinosaur. I want you to show her the ropes. What do I know what goes on here? Get Ferguson to do it. In this clip, Craig is telling Ryan that he wants him to help Natalie. He wants Ryan to show her the ropes. Craig wants Ryan to teach Natalie how the system works in the office. Ryan doesn't want to do this. How many days do you have left? Three. Good, real good. Why, am I getting on your nerves? Oh, no. I mean, I really appreciate you showing me the ropes this week. Let me ride around in your nice, clean car. In this clip, Scott is riding in a car with David. Scott and David are police detectives. Scott is training David to replace him at his job. David says that he appreciates Scott showing him the ropes. David is saying that he appreciates that Scott is teaching him about the job. Fantastic! Let's continue on with our third phrase. The name of this phrase is, word on the street. The meaning of this phrase is, the information that is currently spreading from person to person. We may be talking about people in the neighborhood. We may be talking about what people are saying in the city. We may be talking about the community of people who are interested in sports. The people that we are referring to can vary depending on what we are talking about. An example of this phrase is, word on the street is that Sally won the lottery. She's got no financial problems anymore. This means that people in the area are saying that Sally won the lottery. Another example of this phrase is, word on the street is that Angie broke up with her boyfriend, Todd. 
Apparently, Todd is feeling very sad. This means that people going to the same school as Angie and Todd are saying that Angie broke up with Todd. Occasionally, the word on the street is simply a false rumor. And to summarize, word on the street is when there is a rumor or news going around in a community of people. Now let's look at some video clips that provide examples of this phrase. You Homer Simpson? Yeah. Word on the street is that you have an illegal cable hook. No, no, I, it wasn't me. It was, it was my wife's, my wife's idea. Yeah, yeah, I would never. I hey, hey, oh hey, 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 settle down, big fella. <laughs> oh, we're just, no, whoa, we're just wondering if we could watch the fight. In this clip, Homer and his friends are watching a big boxing match on TV. Since it is expensive to get the fight on TV, Homer has installed an illegal cable hookup to see the fight for free. The police go to Homer's house and say, word on the street is that you have an illegal cable hookup. The police are explaining that other people in the neighborhood are saying that he has an illegal cable hookup. Word on the street means the people around the neighborhood or in the city are talking about this rumor. If you'd like to take your mind off what's troubling you, uh, word on the street is a bobcat has been spotted. <laughs> Penny and Bernadette went shopping for bridesmaids' dresses without me. In this clip, Sheldon can see that his girlfriend, Amy, is upset and he wants to distract her from her problems. He says that word on the street is that a bobcat has been spotted. Sheldon is saying that people that live in the neighborhood are saying that there is a bobcat roaming around. That does not help Amy feel any better. How are we doing, ladies? Oh, Edward, Edward, where the hell are you? The word's all over the street. Moist is gonna raise your offer, pal. He's countering. God, he is a tough old bird. In this clip, Edward is talking with Philip about a financial deal that they are involved in. Philip tells Edward that the word on the street is that a competitor, Morse, is countering their offer. Philip is saying that people in the financial industry are talking about Morse making a counter offer. So we've now finished three phrases. What do you think? Are you enjoying these videos? We have more of these free videos online and we're working hard to add more each week. It takes a lot of time to create this content and we could really use your help. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. By subscribing to our channel, you will be able to receive notifications whenever we upload a new video to YouTube. We really need your help. Great work. As I said, we're now going to discuss our fourth phrase. The name of this phrase is, walk you through it. The meaning of this phrase is, to slowly and carefully explain something to someone, or to show someone how to do something. Walk you through it, and, talk you through it, basically mean the same thing. If I walk you through how to make the perfect birthday cake, it means that I am carefully explaining, step by step, how to make the perfect birthday cake. An example of this phrase is, okay honey. I found the assembly instructions online. I'll talk you through it step by step. The man is saying that he will explain each step necessary to do the assembly. Another example of this phrase is, Hi Clarice. I understand that you would like some help with your math homework. No problem. I'll walk you through it step by step. The woman in the white shirt is saying that she will explain how to solve the math problems step by step. To summarize, walk you through it means to explain step by step, or in detail, how to do something. Excellent! Now let's take a look at some video clips that provide examples of this phrase. What? I, I mean, what a great idea! Wow, who came up with that one? Because that's a beauty, boy! Stewie. You can do it, Yankee. And I'll be right here the whole time to talk you through it. Matter! Whoa!
In this clip, the baseball team has asked a 10-year-old boy, Yankee, to play in a professional game. Screwy, a baseball, tells Yankee that he can do it. He also says that he'll be there to talk him through it. Screwy is saying that he will be there to help Yankee and guide Yankee through the experience. Talk you through it means to assist, guide, or explain something to someone. We can't order Chinese food without Wallowitz? <laughs> Let me walk you through it. Our standard order is the steamed dumpling appetizer, General Tso's chicken, beef with broccoli, shrimp with lobster sauce, and vegetable lo mein. Do you see the problem? In this clip, Sheldon is telling his friends that since Howard did not go to dinner with them, they have a problem. When asked why, Sheldon says that he'll walk them through it. Sheldon is saying that he will explain what the problem is to everyone. But then we sit him up and we give him something familiar to focus on. It's a Blackhawks game from last night. Okay. Well, what if it doesn't work? No, oh, it'll work. I will talk him through it. I will stay there all night. I will make sure he uses the incentives barometer, whatever it takes. In this clip, Samantha is talking to Dr. Morris about her son, who is in the hospital. Samantha has an idea how to help her son begin breathing on his own. She tells Dr. Morris that she will talk him through it. Samantha is saying that she will guide her son through the process. That's terrific. We're now going to look at our fifth phrase. The name of this phrase is, carried away. The meaning of this phrase is, to become so excited or so involved in something that a person is no longer in control of their behavior. I've seen many dogs that seem to get carried away when their owner returns from working. When I say carried away, I mean that the dog is so excited that I think it might hurt someone or itself. An example of this phrase is, hey Mindy. You probably don't realize it, but you've been using those virtual reality glasses for four hours. I think that you're getting a little carried away. What I mean is that Mindy is losing awareness of the world around her due to her immersion in virtual reality. Another example of this phrase is, okay guys. I know that you love football, but don't get carried away. You might knock over the TV. What I'm saying is, please don't get so excited that you start breaking things in the house. To summarize, carried away means to be so excited, angry, or interested in something that you are no longer in control of what you do. Excellent. Now let's look at some video clips for more examples of this phrase. Manny, I know you're excited. I am too, but you're getting a little carried away. Okay, okay. <laughs> Boy, starting to sound like Diego. In this clip, Ellie is talking to Manny about how excited he has been about the arrival of their baby. She tells Manny that she thinks that he's getting a little carried away. She is telling Manny that he is getting too excited and is starting to lose control over his behavior. Carried away means to become very excited and to lose control. Can I do it now? Can I do it now? Yeah, my thing. <clears throat> Got carried away. Sorry about that. It's your board. My board. Okay, with the grain. In this clip, Big Z is teaching Cody how to make a surfboard. But Big Z gets too focused on the project and forgets to let Cody work on the board. Big Z apologizes and says that he got carried away while working on the board. Big Z is admitting that he got so focused on the project that he lost control over what else was happening. Monty's gone. We'll bury him in the morning. It's a simple ceremony. I'll speak. Leonard, you'll play your cello. <laughs> Sheldon, honey, aren't you getting a little carried away? I mean, it's just a toy robot. <laughs> just a toy robot? In this clip, Sheldon's robot has been destroyed and he is very sad. Penny doesn't understand why Sheldon is so sad. 
she tells him that she thinks he is getting carried away. She is saying that Sheldon is getting too emotional about a toy. She doesn't think a burial ceremony is necessary for a toy. All of us here at TD English hope that you're enjoying these videos, but we need your help. The YouTube algorithm doesn't really support us because we are a young channel. If you enjoyed these videos, please spread the word by copying the link to this video to Facebook, Instagram, Reddit, or any other form of social media that you use. We need our community of English learners to work together to allow us to produce more of this content. We also want to thank all of you for subscribing and helping us. It is greatly appreciated. You're doing great. Let's look at our sixth phrase. The name of this phrase is, make a difference. The meaning of this phrase is, to cause something to change. To improve a situation. If you are playing in a basketball game and you do something to make a difference in the game, you have done something that has had a real effect on the game. Maybe your shooting skills resulted in winning the game. An example of this phrase is, I want to make a difference in this world so during my free time, I like to volunteer at the animal hospital. The person is saying that they want to do something that has a positive effect on the world. Therefore, they choose to work for free at the animal hospital. Another example of this phrase is, I love the beach and want to keep it clean. Collecting trash along the beach is my way of making a difference. The man is saying that by helping to clean the beach, he is having a positive effect on the environment. To summarize, make a difference means to cause something to change. To be important in some way. Great! Now let's look at some video clips for examples of this phrase. In regards to your specific comments about the show, our research indicates that one person cannot make a difference, no matter how big a screwball she is. So let me close by saying... And the horse I rode in on! I'll show them what one screwball can do! In this clip, the man that produces cartoon programs is writing a letter to Marge. She had previously written and told him that their cartoons were too violent. His letter to her says that he doesn't think that one person can make a difference. The man is insulting Marge and telling her that she alone cannot have an effect on what kinds of cartoons they produce. Make a difference means to be able to improve a situation. He was always the one. That's not how he felt. He felt you were the one that was going to do something special with your life. That you were going to make a difference in the world. Maybe even change it. In this clip, Jean is talking to another mutant, Scott. Scott is very upset because he thinks his brother has died. He thinks his brother was an important person. Jean tells him that his brother thought that Scott was the one who could make a difference in the world. Jean is saying that Scott's brother thought that Scott was an important person that could change the world in a positive way. There's so many problems, you never feel like you're accomplishing anything. Violence, rip-offs, muggings, kids can't leave the house, you gotta walk them to school. But in Amity, one man can make a difference. In 25 years, there's never been a shooting or a murder in this town. In this clip, Sheriff Brody is talking to Hooper about their home, Amity. He says that in Amity, one man can make a difference. Brody is saying that one man can do something that has a meaningful effect on the town. Okay, we've come to our last phrase. The name of this phrase is, Ground Rules. The meaning of this phrase is, these are the basic rules about what should be done in a particular situation or event. An example of this phrase is, hi Paula. We're going to do an MRI today, but first I'll explain some basic ground rules before we start. 
The man is saying that before they start the MRI, Paula needs to understand certain safety rules she needs to follow. Before doing an MRI, you need to remove all metal objects from your possession and stay very still in the machine. Another example of this phrase is, Hello Joel. I know that you've never been to the Middle East, so I'm going to discuss some basic ground rules first. The man is saying that when traveling to the Middle East, there are certain safety rules that you need to follow. To summarize, ground rules are basic rules that you should follow. Fantastic! Now let's look at some video clips for more examples of this phrase. These are the ground rules. I hook up with one guy a season. Usually takes me a couple weeks to pick the guy. Uh, kind of my own spring training. And yeah, well, you two are the most promising prospects of the season so far. In this clip, Annie is explaining the ground rules to Nuke and Crash regarding possibly dating her. She says that each year, she chooses one baseball player to date. So when Annie says ground rules, she is saying that she wants to explain how the process of dating her occurs. Crash is not interested in such a process. You beat up house? Just one right hook. Why? What happened? You were right. I told them we need to lay down some ground rules. Got a little heated. That's not what I meant. In this clip, Dr. Tob is talking with his wife about a fight that he had with Dr. House. Tob explains that he tried to lay down some ground rules and they began to argue. Tob is saying that he tried to explain some basic rules as to how they should interact, and Dr. House disagreed. Give him a chance. It's great seeing you like this. <laughs> yeah. Hi, honey. Now, some ground rules while under our roof. Rule number one, no killing. Anyone, ever, no matter how bad. In this clip, Colossus is talking with Wade. Colossus is explaining the ground rules to Wade if he wants to stay in his house. Colossus is telling Wade what the basic rules of the house are while he is living there. The first ground rule is that he can't kill anybody. Congratulations, you've completed the video. I hope that you will now understand these phrases when you hear them in the future.